Hey, it's Tesla Connect. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about the Tesla Cybertruck one week later. Some amazing news over this past week. It's been action packed and we need to really double click on it and see what's going on. So I've got two things that I want to do today. One is I'm going to take a look at this amazing data set that uh, has been published uh, essentially on Twitter. There's a link. I'll share the link, obviously, uh, in the description below. It's full of data about the past week and the growth of the number of uh, pre-orders and a bunch of other stuff. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to double click on it, unpack it, whatever you want to say. And we're going to try to figure out what it means for the future of the Tesla Cybertruck. All right, and the second thing that I want to talk about today is about the biggest flip that you'll probably see this year from a Tesla bear to, I think, a Tesla bull. <laughs> but um, I, I, I don't know. You tell me what you think. But I want to talk about Jim Cramer, and I want to talk about how uh, he is now buying a Model X for his spouse and his daughters. Um, yeah, whatever, Jim, uh, whatever makes you sleep at night. But this is a major Tesla bear who now is a Tesla customer. We're going to talk about that. So those are the two things on my list today. Let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at today is uh, this data set that's been you know essentially published through, uh, through Twitter here. And this gentleman here, Alter Vigo, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he posted basically the rate of growth of the Tesla um, truck reservations. And uh, you can see that uh, it's almost at 250,000. I think that was a couple of days ago. It's probably higher today. In fact, we'll take a look at the data set. It's pretty up to date uh, and it is higher today, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, so Without further ado, so I want to give a you know shout out to this guy for posting this. I'm not sure if he's the author of the spreadsheet or not. You see, Ben <laughs> Sullins is already all over it. Uh, I haven't checked yet. I'm sure he's got a, a video probably you know, going deep into this. But uh, let's take a look at the data set and uh, let's see what it means. Okay, before we get started, let's just take a look. Let's just go right over to the money shot. And then we're going to talk about this data set and you know some of the challenges with it and how it's constructed. So first of all, uh, this is from what I can tell. And again, I'm not the author of the spreadsheet, but it seems to be a pretty up-to-date uh, trend line in terms of uh, the reservations of the truck. As of uh, the latest data here, you can see that uh, there's 299,000, almost 300,000 uh, reservations. And I think that's really up, up to the moment. I'm going to explain a little bit about how this uh, spreadsheet is constructed, uh, but this is uh, amazing. By, you know, by contrast, one week later, the Model 3, um, the Model 3 was at, I think, 325,000 uh, pre-orders, if memory serves me correct. Now, there is a key difference there. And before we dive into it, the Model 3, as you know, had, I think, a $1,000 a deposit. There's a hundred dollar deposit uh, on the Cybertruck. However, um, I think what's still relevant is it's an intent to buy. So even though it's only a hundred dollars, you're not going to slap a hundred dollars down on a reservation if you have zero intent to buy. So, you know, are the conversions going to be as high as the Model 3? Time will tell, but I argue that it's a strong intent to buy. So these are very interesting numbers. Okay, let's, um, let's kind of dissect this, uh, this spreadsheet a little bit. So from what I can tell, uh, again, I'm not the author of this, so I'm making some assumptions here, right? But there's there's a uh, sequential relationship between the relationship, uh, sorry, the um, reservation numbers. So that's basically how this person is determining uh, the number of, uh, of total reservations. So basically subtracting the latest um, one, uh, off the web or whatever the source of his data is and subtracting the the minimum so like the lowest uh reservation number that can be found and the difference between those two and the difference between those two numbers uh corrected for uh and i'll get to this in a moment there's a spot in here where there's a discount calculation rate for cancellation so um but essentially the difference between those two numbers is how uh this person has come up with their estimate of the number of reservations. 
All right, so let's look at, at some of the challenges here with the reservation numbers. So from my understanding, and there's a footnote in the spreadsheet about it, but basically uh, the reservation numbers could apply to not just the Cybertruck, but also uh, to other Tesla products, perhaps even solar. So it's hard to determine that all of these are Cybertruck, because they're probably not, uh, and what that Delta is, we don't really know. But what we do know for sure is what, Elon has been tweeting, and I think his last tweet was 250,000 reservations as of uh, a couple of days ago. So, uh, you know, this data is looking pretty reasonable to me at this point. Let's get into some of the other details. Now, there's assumptions here about which um, models have been ordered and whether FSD ha has been ordered. So let's just kind of break through how the spreadsheet, I think, you know, again, not being the author, uh, has been constructed. Uh, all of the formulas are, are hidden, so I'm not able to see the formulas uh, anywhere. If, if you see when I click on a cell, you know, can't see anything. But so, so I'm guessing here, but it looks to me like uh, this person has 273 uh, some odd pieces of real data. Uh, that's my guess that that this right here that you see these uh, different reservations are based on actual real data. And then this person seems to be extrapolating from this data what they think the breakout's going to be uh, <clears throat> in a broader sense in terms of um, the different models that are being ordered. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to share a link to uh, to this and full kudos to to the author. I don't you know claim to have done this. So um, it's, it's really awesome work. Uh, so basically, um, let's see, what else can I tell you about this? Um, this data set here. Um, well, let's get back to, let's talk about cancellation. So uh, there is a, I'm not sure where this person came up with a discounted cancellation rate of 13%. Um, you know, how, wait a minute, there seems to be something here. Uh, yeah, it does seem low to me too. But beyond that, uh, I'm not sure where that figure is coming from. Uh, the cancellation rate is probably going to be a little bit higher, especially as as time uh, goes on. But nonetheless, uh, you know, I think that if you go back to the chart here, I think the trend line is still relevant, right? And uh, you know, you can see obviously the number of reservations is flattening out over time, as as you would expect. So right here was was the announcement, and you know, you have rapid growth, and then you've got a leveling off. So. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about this uh, data set. I mean, 300,000 uh, you know, pre-orders of the Cybertruck, polarizing design, um, you know, not as many as the Model 3. The Model 3, when it was released, again, 325,000 uh, reservations in the first week, but that's a more mainstream car. Uh, it looks more like a car. It's, you know, so it's probably going to appeal to a greater mass of people. Whereas the Cybertruck, we know that there are some real strong feelings one way or the other. You love it or you hate it. And, uh, you know, to have this strength, this intent to buy is what I'm calling this, uh, is incredible. And, you know, I personally, a week later, I have no regrets. I'm still super excited about my order. Um, I think the Tesla truck, is going to be absolutely awesome. Okay, so that's basically looking at the data. Let's move on to our next topic. All right, so let's talk about Jim Cramer next uh, from Mad Money. Uh, this guy, as I mentioned in the introduction, has been a Tesla bear for a long time. I'm gonna play a little clip for you here, and then let's talk about it. But you know what? <laughs> I, I give up. I mean, the car's too damn great. I know that my wife wants to do it. Uh, how do you stop this? Okay. <laughs> I'll edit that part out. Um, so maybe I won't. I don't know. Uh, so let's break that down. Um, the car is too damn great. Jim Cramer. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Uh, I got to tell you, I was not expecting this. Uh, I think this pretty much went viral. Um, I think really what this is saying is that uh, everybody wants a Tesla. Matter of fact, Jim Cramer says that uh, in another line. Actually, if you watch the full uh, video here, I'll link that in the description as well. So Jim's on board. Uh, the Tesla shorts are falling 
off a cliff, left, right, and center. Uh, what do you think? Are you on board now? Were you on the fence? Uh, do you think Tesla's got a great future? Uh, I do. I think they have a fantastic future, and this is just more proof in the pudding. So love to know your thoughts on this one. That's it for today. As always, thank you for joining me. Please subscribe uh, to my channel, Tesla Connect. Over and out. Bye.